What's up boys? Welcome to the first Ben vid on the channel, where I will be reviewing footage of my own torture. The torture of making a game in 24 hours. Anyways, as you may know from the announcement video, I'm currently studying at Full Sail University for game design, which means I'm gonna need some practice with designing games. So I thought it would be fun to make a game within 24 hours. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. You see, the beginning didn't really start with a timer. It started with an idea. An idea to see what I could do in 24 hours. I asked myself, what 24 hour challenge should I do? And after pondering this question, it came to me. I want to make a game in 24 hours, I exclaimed, excited to take on this challenge. Boy, how naive I was. Thinking I understood just how hard this challenge would be, I gave myself a couple rules. One, I planned my main features before the 24 hours to have an idea of what I was doing. And two, I am allowed to use pre-built models, tutorials, and reference code. The only thing I can't do is straight up copy and paste. This is because I'm still very new to this, and I do not have enough experience to do everything from scratch. I will also be using the first person template provided by Unreal for this reason. On top of the rules, I wanted to give you guys a little more info. I will be using Unreal Engine 5 for this project, and all of the models and tutorials I use will be in the description. These model packs can all be found for free on the Unreal Marketplace, and the tutorials are all on YouTube. With that out of the way, the first thing we needed to do was plan the main features of the game. Since I was using the first person template, I already knew the general style I wanted to go for. I wanted a first person shooter with a special ability of some sort. Luckily, I knew just the ability. For a school assignment, I added a grappling hook to a game. One that had three different modes. A basic mode for launching the player, a fire mode to commit arson, and an ice mode to cover up the player's crimes. This ended up being the main gameplay feature I would want to implement. I planned out a few other blueprints, and then played Minecraft instead of playing anymore. That won't backfire at all. After a day or so, it was finally time to start recording. So it was time to make a new project. Now, this would have been the point where past me would have given a few words at the start of the 24 hours. But what you may not realize is, I'm dumb. And in my ignorance, I started without recording any audio for f eight hours. So you'll have to deal with me explaining everything from memory. Thanks a lot, past me. And no, this clip isn't me spending the first 20 minutes trying to figure out code BS to change how the bullets are just for me to give up because that would be really stupid of me. <laughs> Anyways, the first thing I decided to do was implement the base feature since this would be the mechanic that everything else would be based on. The last time I implemented this feature, I used a tutorial, and then changed it based on the game I was adding it to. Luckily, this time I could get a bit more help from it, since it was also based on the first person template. I spent a few hours working on it, and it turned out pretty good. The player presses right click in order to fire the grapple from their gun, and then presses caps lock to activate its ability. I set up a separate button input to activate the ability, so the player can decide when they want to be pulled by the grapple, instead of constantly being pulled around. The player can also press shift to change the grapple type. After adding the base grapple, the other two were easy. All I needed was something for them to interact with. Time to add a flamethrower. After adding an amazing flamethrower, I also added a brazier that works as a trigger for things like doors. I can already hear you asking, but Ben, why is that effect so much worse than the flamethrower? And the answer to that is, I made it. There were no good effects for this in the package I'm using, so I followed a tutorial to make my own. It might be worse, but it gets the job done. I then spent way too long on this automatic door that can be triggered by a brazier. The code took a while to get working since I decided to try and recreate the interaction system in the Stackabout kit without creating an actual system, but after hours of working on it, it works perfectly. Okay, maybe not perfectly, but I can fix that later. I decided to move on to making a platform that would drop the player when they stand on it. After some simple code, it worked per- uh, I'm starting to see a pattern here. Many, many minutes later. Now it's working? That's all I had to do? Ugh. Well, with that working, I wanted to add... Wait, who are you? Uh, uh, God, why are you so loud? I decided to ignore the random guy and got to work on making enemies. I really hated this dude walking around my level screaming at me, so I decided to make enemies based on him. Since I don't know how to animate, I wasn't able to give them any guns or melee attacks or anything like that, 
so I just made them annoy the player until they were killed. I decided to name these things Joe, because they're really starting to remind me of Joe Mama. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, that was really cringe. With the Joes being so lackluster, I wanted to add something for the players to fear, which ended up being a simple spike trap. This also acts as a way for the player to kill Joes without actually killing them. Can't charge me for murder now, feds! Wait, what's going on? FBI, open up! Wait, 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 it was a joke, I swear! Oh! After getting out of jail, we finally reached the halfway point, where I decided to waste another hour on a lunch break. What can I say? Jail breaks work up an appetite. But don't worry, after wasting that much time, I got straight to work on some new features. By now you've most likely noticed the health bar that's in the top left corner, which totally didn't take me a few hours. I have no idea what you're on about. I originally tried to make my own pixel art for the health, armor, and crosshairs, but they all turned out pretty bad. I'm no artist. So I kept the crosshairs and settled for bars for the health and armor. After implementing these features, they worked- Oh, come on! Yeah, I couldn't figure this one out, so I left it as is. For some reason, the health and armor bar wouldn't update properly no matter what I did. So you were either at max or zero in terms of health and armor. I guess you guys really should fear the spikes. Nearing the end of the objects I made, I decided to make three power-ups, a speed boost, a health pack, and an armor pack. The speed and armor power-up work fine, but the health pack doesn't do much for you, since everything one-shots you. But if you can manage to survive off zero health, then you can use these to heal up. The armor basically just allows you to take one hit and the speed works perfectly. No punchline this time, it actually works. I then made some crates to give you power-ups when you shoot them, and that is the end of the objects. But there is still work to be done. Now I had to get music from someone, and I knew just the guy. Hey, what's up? Yo, so I needed some music for the game I'm making, and uh -huh. I decided I'm taking Club City. Wait, so you're just gonna take it without- you're not gonna ask me or anything, or? That is 100% no? correct. Bye, my friend, thank you! Uh, what? What, really? <laughs> Wait, what, what do you mean? After borrowing the music I needed, I simply had to loop it while the level was running. Here's the new soundtrack, courtesy of Mr. Cap. After the music, I wanted a bit more polish. I took some inspiration from Joe 1 and made extra voice lines for the Joes to say both when they stare at you, you Stop! There, you violated the law. And when they're dead. Tell my wife. I had uh, wife. The thing is, Joe 1 learned these voice lines and now blends in with the crowd better than ever. I will get you one day, Joe 1, I swear. At this point, I was exhausted. I had to keep taking breaks just to cool off my brain. But the challenge wasn't done yet. I still, at the very least, wanted to get one complete level made, so I got to work. For those of you who don't know, level design isn't easy. If I wanted to make a proper level within this time, it would either have to be a level or I would have to kick into overdrive. Anyways, here's the outside. Now now, I can already hear the boos, but hear me out. This is the first time I'm designing a game by myself in this time span. And none of this has been easy. I was starting to lose my motivation, and I was realizing a lot of things weren't working. So I just sped up the process. In the end, I did this for fun and experience, and I accomplished my goal in both of those areas. So overall I'm happy with the outcome, even though it didn't turn out the best. Without further ado, here is the level I made. my wife. I had another wife. Ugh.
like I said, it wasn't the best. I threw something together to make an okay level. But that's okay for now. Some things I wish I would've done like adding more sound effects for feedback and adding some animations to the Joes, but I believe this is a good first attempt. I hope to continue doing projects like these as long as you guys are enjoying them. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video, and leave me some feedback down there. I really want to become better as a content creator so I can eventually survive off YouTube and focus on it as a career. Thank you for watching till the end. I'll hopefully see you all in the next video. Take care!